Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about how you can take strings, so just a piece of text that has HTML written inside of it, so the tags are written inside of that string, and how you can turn that into actual HTML element nodes and text nodes and inject it into your web page. So we're talking about different ways of doing that and some do's and don'ts along the way. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Chris Ferdinandi. Um, he's got a great website called Go Make Things. And uh, he and I have had a couple of conversations about this topic. He's actually got a couple of posts that he's done this year. Uh, one on testing DOM injection performance and another one about just what I'm going to be talking about here. So if you're looking for a little bit more information, uh, those links to those two uh, posts are down inside the description. And there's also a link down in my description to the sample code that I'm going to be using on this page. All right, so jumping into this. Uh, Pretty basic web page. We've got a header, we've got a main element, and this is where we're going to be sticking all of our content. So I have a variable called main, which I'm using to point at this element, and that's where I'm going to be injecting everything. I created a whole bunch of strings that I'm going to use as my content to inject. And just for reference sakes, I put the numbers at the start of these paragraphs, so one through six, just to keep be able to keep track of where things are being placed on the page. Now the first way that we can do this, you can take a string and pass it to the property inner HTML. As long as this thing that you have in front here, as long as this is an actual HTML element, so it can't be a text node, it can't be a document fragment. If this is an HTML element, there will be an inner HTML property and we can pass this in. And that's great, that works, it's simple, it's easy to do, but in terms of performance, it can sometimes slow you down a little bit especially if you were injecting a whole series of things. So if I have, um, let's say, an unordered list and I'm injecting a whole bunch of list items, if I'm doing that with this method and I'm doing the inner HTML property inside the loop, there's going to be a lot of redrawing going on in the browser and it's going to slow you down. So you can use this, but limit yourself to using it when there's only one thing that you're sticking in. If I've got one paragraph or one span or one anchor tag or one list item, if I'm just adding one thing, not a problem. We can go ahead and use this. Now, document fragments, I was talking about those when I said uh, as long as this is an HTML element. Document fragment is just sort of this lightweight container that you can put things inside of. You can put HTML nodes the node element and the text nodes inside of a document fragment, and then you can inject the document fragment into the page. The only thing about it is once you place it there, it's going to disappear, and you're only going to be left with the content that you put inside of there. But because this is not an HTML node, it means it doesn't have all the same methods. It doesn't have an inner HTML property. I can't just give it a string. It does have an append method. So right here, if I did this, if I call the append method and I give it this string, it's going to say fine, it's going to append that. And then if we put that fragment that we just created inside of main, this is what we get. It escapes all the characters inside of here and it still treats it as if it were just text. It won't do the conversion from the text into the HTML. So that's one drawback to um, document fragments, they're a great thing. There's two different ways you can create them, either with new document fragment or document create document fragment. These two lines are equal. They do the exact same thing. Um, but really, you want to use this if you have a node. So if I have an, a list item element or a paragraph element, if I've already got the element, this is a great thing to use. If you're building a list, so I've got a whole bunch of list items inside my loop. What I can be doing is I can be adding my list items to the document fragment. And then after the loop, I call the append one time and there's my fragment. So this is great inside a loop. And then we do the append afterwards. Okay, so that's the second one. And I'm just going to comment this out because I don't want to have that text showing up in there. I just want to do these things like this. This is CSS being applied to the actual paragraph element. If we look inside of elements, 
inside the body here. We'll zoom in a little bit for you. Inside the main, there's an actual paragraph element with the text, with the anchor tag inside of it. So we are dealing with an actual element here. Okay, so inner HTML, document fragment, if you're doing nodes, but not if you're doing what we're trying to do here, which is take a string and convert it into HTML. DOM parser, this is a great way you can do it. Um, it does have one drawback though. When you create a DOM parser, what you're going to be able to do is create some XML or create some HTML. You pass in a string to the parse from string method, and then you tell it what I'm passing in is SVG or XML or HTML. So you can specify the MIME type of what you want to parse. This will then give you a document object. Now, I've broken this into two steps. You could, if you want, say new DOM parser dot parse from string. You can combine these two lines. That'll work just fine as well. Um, now, it returns this document object, which is an entire, it's like it having an entire HTML file. It's not just this string. It's an HTML file wrapped around this string. So this is going to be inside the body of this brand new HTML document. So we have to be careful about that one. Uh, if you go doc.documentElement, this would be the HTML element for that file. If you do doc.body, this is the body element. And then first child, that is going to be, well, what we have right here, these paragraphs. So if I uncomment this one, now we're appending doc.body.firstchild and what I will do is inside of here, I will console.log doc, yeah, let's do document element. So you can see the whole thing. All right, jumping back in here, here's our second one with the number three. That is what we're doing here, the number three string. So we've got both added. And if we go into console, here is the document element. It's the entire thing that we get from that doc. All right. So that's DOM parser. Number four, another great quick way to do this is creating a contextual fragment. So not a document fragment like we are using up here, but a contextual fragment. To do that, we need to define something called a range. A range is basically you select a little area on the page. You can say, okay, here, I have selected a range of the document. This is part of my document that I'm grabbing. Now it could be anything at all. If we look at this content here, we've got a main element and inside of that, there's a text element here, which is the carriage return. And then we have a paragraph element and then a text element, another paragraph element, and then the main. So we have all of these elements that are inside of there. And I could select one or more of those. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a range. So document create range. Basically, I'm saying I'm going to create a selection. Now, I, I'm not pointing at anything on the page yet. I've just created this nebulous range object. Once I have a range, I can call create contextual fragment and pass it a string. This string is going to be just some HTML. It will read this and it will be able to parse the HTML from that. We have that. Now I can call append and that's going to append this contextual fragment. There we go. There's number four. There's the contextual fragment that's been built. So it's the same thing. Now, one other slight variation here. I created the range on its own. And then with the range, what you can do is you can create a starting point and an ending point. And this is the context for your contextual fragment. You're saying, okay, from this point to this point inside my HTML document, that is my range. So inside the main element, after the first child, and then the end of it is inside the main element up to the second element. So between the first and second element, that's where I've created this range. So inside of here, between the first and second, so between one and three, right there, it's like I've made a selection I've put my cursor right here. Now, with that range place selected, I can do the same thing as I did up here. We can create our contextual fragment. We pass in the string number five, and then 
we can call this insert node method and it will insert it where we have the range selected. So we've got a context and we're saying, here's the piece of HTML. This is where we want to stick it. And here it is. There's the number five injected between the number one and the number three. So inside of our body, here's the three, here's the one, and here's the five that we just injected. All right, our final one, insert adjacent HTML, another quick and easy one to remember. Uh, so there isn't insert adjacent element, and you can pass it a node and say where you want the node stuck in, or insert adjacent text and say where you want the text node. Insert adjacent HTML actually lets us provide a string. And just like create contextual fragment, and just like DOM parser, it is going to allow us to pass in a string that will be parsed and then injected. So I am looking at my main element and I'm saying after begin, which is here's the main element, after it begins means right here, right after the opening tag is finished, I'm going to inject right there. Or I can say before begin, or I can say before end or after end. There's four places here. One, two, three, four. Those four places. I'm doing it after begin, which is right here. And we're going to inject the number six. So I'll save that. Page reloads. And there it is. There's the number six right at the very beginning. It's the first thing inside of our main element. There we go. All right. So that is a big selection, lots of choices, things that you can do to take strings and turn them into actual HTML when injecting them. Um, have fun with that. Do some experimenting on your own. Uh, try things out and have a look at Chris's article on um, performance with these as well. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.